Welcome to the World Karate Federation's The Decade's Best, Series 2, Chapter 8, and again revisiting the 2012 Senior World Championships in Paris, France. Today's programme features the male kata final between Antonio Diaz from Venezuela and Mindac of France. And joining me to revisit that final is the national coach for kata from Scotland, Stephanie Connell, three times British champion, 13 times Scottish national champion, and double world champion, Antonio Diaz from Venezuela. Antonio is also holder of the Guinness World Record for the number of world medals, eight, incredibly, eight world medals. So welcome, guys. Thank you. Lovely to be here. Now, Paris was your third consecutive world final, Antonio, and you were going into this as the world champion. Now, can you tell us what has changed for you between 2010 and 2012 with the pressure of being a world champion? Um, I think for 2010, I, I was, of course, uh, uh, hoping to, to win for the first time. Here, I had the pressure, you know, to, to look good, to, to defend the title, I was expecting um, uh, s repeating the final with with Luca, uh, but uh, Min managed to beat him in the semi final and and knowing he was in his home, uh, uh, you know he was local and with all the public uh, in this tournament, uh, I kn I knew it was going to be a, a, a tough match, but I, I think I enjoyed this tournament a lot. I, it's, it's one of the best tournaments I have been in and and and. Uh, I think I, I, I tried to, to enjoy it as much as I, I could. Well, you certainly did enjoy it, that's for sure. And as you say, Mindak was, uh, did a fantastic job in defeating Luca Valdesi. And Stephanie, you were a competitor in the Qatar in 2012 uh, in Paris Bercy. What a wonderful tournament that was, one of the best ever. How did, uh, how did it go for you? Yeah, I love this tournament. It was the best I ever did as a senior athlete. Uh, I reached the last 16, so I was very proud. That was some personal goals. Um, but the tournament was just incredible. The atmosphere, the crowd that you can see. There was so many young children going to get autographs and pictures with superstars like Antonio. And it was so nice to see our sport celebrated in that way. Well, yes, it, it was an, it was an exceptional event. Uh, the rules were a little bit different then. We see in the corners there were the the judges, as we see there, and the the flag system, and that's now changed um, to the point system. But how do you feel from the standpoint of uh, uh, the athlete's point of view, Antonio? What is what are your uh, views about that? Well, I I think now with the with the new rules, with the points, we have we had a better feedback. Uh, especially now with the the two scores, you know, the athletic and the technical points, uh, you, you you know a little bit better um, maybe where where you have to improve or, or where the judges see you uh, a little bit weak or strong. But um, I I miss the the emotion of you know the the confrontation when you you, you were uh, like like the flag system, you know, the matches one against the other. Um, and, and I think, I hope maybe in the future we can find a, a way to do it like, like the way we do the medal matches today, that is um, one competitor against the other with the points. I think for the public, this is very exciting, you know, um, uh, and, and, and maybe we can find a, a mix <laughs> between the two systems. And would you agree with that, Stephanie? Yeah, very much so. I don't think we've saw the final version yet. I think we're still learning how to have the crowd involved and your teammates involved. And I love the, the breakdown of technical and athletic, but I agree with Antonio, some, some more adrenaline through the rounds would be fantastic. Yeah, um, and, and there certainly was the drama of the flags and the uncertainty of which colour was going to go up and the majority. Now we see uh, Minda coming to the end of his kata here, and it was a great performance of Super Empe, no doubt. And uh, you were waiting in the wings there, Antonio, for your chance to come out. 
you must, as world champion, you must have felt so much pressure. How, how, how did you manage that? Uh, you know, this tournament was uh, fantastic for me. I, I prepared a lot. I also think that um, uh, I, I, I competed before this a lot of times in, in Paris for the Paris Open and and I always had very good results and and I think I had a, a good connection with the French public even when I was facing uh, French athletes in different finals so uh, I didn't feel like I have the crowd against me you know of course they were they, they are going to go for the for the local but uh, I knew that you know also the, the, the French people in some way like me <laughs> so um, I tried to use that in favor and, and, and like I say I was very good uh, prepare for this tournament, but I remember clearly when I when I entered from from for that tunnel and saw you know like fifteen thousand people, I was like wow this is this is incredible. So for one moment I I like stop everything stop, but my my mind was like okay enjoy this do your best. <laughs> well the you 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 are so right about the atmosphere, but just look how respectful the crowd are as you say 15 16 thousand people there and you could hear a pin drop whilst you're performing your kata there was a standing ovation for riku usami we remember so the the french audience is very expert in their knowledge of kata and uh as you say to steph this was your stephanie your last uh performance as a or your first, as a senior this the best performance you got and um, you've now finished competing, you're now a coach for the national team and you've got all sorts of other interesting projects going. So how do you feel, how's the transition for you from athlete to coach? Yeah, for, for me it was a, a very easy and natural transition. As I grew up in my mid-twenties, we had a really good group of young athletes coming through our organisation, our association. So we started coaching them and it was very quickly we realised they had more potential than us and if they had the right coaching then they could go on to achieve um, big things so it was a very easy and natural transition for me to do that and I, I love my role as Scotland's CASA coach but an exciting thing we're doing at the moment is there's a pilot system for a Commonwealth outreach programme and that's kind of okay. uh, helping the WKF reach into Commonwealth countries who want to be more involved with the sports side and the WKF governing body um, as Karate continues to grow. So that's been an exciting project over the last year. Oh, brilliant. And, uh, and good luck with that, Stephanie. And uh, I hope that goes well for you. Uh, Antonio, you're going through the kata here, Super MP is the same kata that Mindak performed. Uh, what's going through your mind as you're getting toward the culmination of that kata? Oh, I think I was uh, very connected and, and not, not thinking at all, you know, it was like just that's that moment. Uh, but, you know, I, uh, something happened before the final, I was warming up and the French team had like their own private warming up place. And um, I didn't know which kata uh, uh, Mindag was doing. But uh, a few minutes before the final, I saw he was doing Super Impe. And I, I think always Super Impe was a very natural kata for me. And I, I, I think it was, you know, my, my, one of my strongest. So when I saw he was doing Super Impe, it was kind of like, okay, I can, I can show, you know, uh, if it's the same kata, maybe, maybe it's better for me. So, so that gave me a little bit more of confidence before the final. Well, that was brilliant, and uh, what a brilliant performance it was, and we'll see those flags go up in just a moment uh, to crown you for a second time as world champion. And since then, you have, Antonio, become somewhat of a superstar in the karate world, it has to be said, and you have a tremendous uh, social media following as a result of that. You've gone on to become part of the Athletes Commission and the like, so what advice would you give to uh, developing potential top athletes in how they might manage that uh, social media persona, Antonio? Yeah, I think, I think now it's very different from when I, when I started, you know, that, that now we have 
all this uh, exposure, we have all this media to, 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 to access. And uh, my recommendation is try to be as, you know, as, as natural as possible, you know, try to be yourself. I think nowadays with all these social media, people try to be something different or, or try to, you know, impress. And, and I think it's, you know, uh, as long as you keep your essence, you, you, the real you, uh, you know, you're gonna do, you're gonna do good. Well, I'm sure you are going to do good as well as you say, because uh, this performance of Super Empe was absolutely wonderful, and and you became world champion for a second time. You're going to the Olympics later this year in Tokyo, which is just going to be the best ever. Uh, how do you feel? about that Antonio uh, you must be you must be obviously frustrated with the delay but so excited to be going to the Olympics yeah it's been hard you know a lot of a lot of um, uh, things happened with the pandemic and everything but I think it's, it's um, it gave me some more time to prepare but of course there's there's uncertainty about you know um, all the you know things happening in the world with the with the pandemics and know how the games are going to be. But at the end, uh, it's, it's, I think it's going to be a, a great sport event and and it's going to be also like like they have tried to you know project it like a, a, a light for humanity. You know this these games reuniting all the sports uh, people you know and all the sports community. So I, I, I I'm. I'm very happy that this is going to be my, my first, of course, Olympic Games, but uh, also that in some way I think we're going to remember these games. They're, they're going to be, they are going to be well, different, I'm sure. but we're going to remember them. Yep. Yes, no doubt, no doubt. They, uh, and we, everybody will wish you the best of luck for that. So we come to the end of the program. I'd like to say thank you so much, Antonio Diaz, once again, and thank you, Stephanie Connell, for your time. And to everybody for watching, until next time, bye-bye. Thank you.